The shocking numbers behind the Lake Mead drought crisis. America's largest reservoir is rapidly drying up. Lake Mead, hit by an extreme drought caused by climate change and increased water demand, hit its lowest level on Wednesday since the reservoir was filled in the 1930s. Lake Mead, a reservoir on the Colorado River east of Las Vegas on the Nevada-Arizona border, is poised to become his focus in one of the country's most significant climate crises. Water scarcity in the West Water shortages alone on the Colorado River will affect millions of people in the years and decades to come, with some suffering painful water cuts, researchers say, no threats on the horizon. New forecasts show that the first-ever water shortage along the Colorado River will almost certainly be declared later this year. Even without climate change, we would have a problem because we're taking more water out than the river could provide, John Fleck, director of the Water Resources Program at the University of New Mexico, told CNN. But climate change has made the problem much worse by substantially reducing the flow in the river. Lake Mead is about 143 feet below full and the deficit is about the height of the Statue of Liberty. Lake Mead's water level on Wednesday hit a new low of 1,070.6 feet above sea level since it was filled in in the 1930s, according to U.S. Bureau of Reclamation data. More specifically, each day of the past eight days has been a record of human uptake of water, rapidly evaporating it from the reservoir. The lake has dropped about 143 feet from its 2000 level when it was last considered full. What remains is a bathtub ring of white minerals as high as the Statue of Liberty along the lake's rugged shoreline. About 100 years ago, representatives of seven U.S. states, Nevada, California, Arizona, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico, agreed to divide the Colorado River. According to Fleck, hydrologists have warned that authorities are promising more water than rivers can give. The plan has been pushed forward. Hydrologists warned that officials were promising more water than the river could give, according to Fleck. But in an era driven by power and politics, their warnings were largely ignored and plans moved forward. 25 million people depend on Lake Mead's water. That's more than the population of Florida. The Colorado River, which winds through the Rocky Mountains and empties into the Gulf of California, is losing water due to heat and drought caused by climate change. Farming communities, especially in central Arizona, will be hit hardest by the first water outage. When the water is scarce, farmers say they are forced to fallow their land. The Native American community has also been affected, Fleck said. A number of tribal communities across the Colorado River basin have been promised some water that they don't have yet. The last time Lake Mead was considered full was in 2000. 21 years ago, the elevation of Lake Mead he reached 1,214 feet. The highest recorded level was 1,225 feet above sea level in 1983, experts say it may never be full again. Lake Mead is currently 36% full. This number will continue to decline as the rapid decline of reservoirs continues to outpace forecasts made a few months ago. Water levels are projected to drop another 20 feet by 2022. This, rapid decline, scares me, Fleck said. It's declining so fast that it can overwhelm our ability to deal with the problem. I didn't expect the bottom to go down so quickly and we're just talking about Lake Mead. Since then, Lake Mead has lost 5.5 trillion gallons of water. That means over 1,000 Olympic-sized pools are lost every day for almost 22 years. When Fleck visited Lake Mead 10 years ago, it was 13 feet taller than it is today. Still, he remembered being afraid of losing water too quickly, since then he has been there every year and has seen firsthand the physical changes around Lake Mead. The bathtub ring is a visual reminder of where the water level once peaked. Lakes lose about 6 feet of water each year to evaporation. And climate change is making it worse, as temperatures rise, the snowmelt that feeds rivers decreases and more water evaporates. Especially during extreme heat waves like the one the West is experiencing this week, 6 feet of water represents an average loss of 300 billion gallons per year, in addition to water extracted for human use and power generation. About 40% of the annual evaporation occurs in her June, July, and August.
This is enough to water her 75,000 homes in the Las Vegas Valley for her 12 months, excessive heat waves could evaporate more than 10 billion gallons of water this week alone. That's the equivalent of 15,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The Hoover Dam's power output fell by 25% due to lower water levels. The Hoover Dam that forms the Lake Mead Reservoir produces approximately 2,000 megawatts of hydroelectric power. That's enough power for about 8 million Americans, however, as less water flows through the Hoover Dam, its capacity has been close to 1,500 megawatts in recent weeks, down about 25%. The drop has affected several states such as California, Arizona and Nevada, all getting their energy from the Hoover Dam. If the lake loses another 50 feet, the water will stop flowing through the Hoover Dam, experts say the dead pool level is 895 feet, at which point water stops flowing through the Hoover Dam, cutting it off for everyone downstream. What we need to do is recognize the science behind this reality and that this does not get better, Fleck said. We're all going to have to deal with less and collaborate on a new set of numbers that reflects the reality of the science today. 90% of Las Vegas water comes from Lake Mead. Las Vegas has prepared for the worst-case scenario for years. The city draws water from two of her submerged intake structures near the west shore of the lake. But when the water level drops below them, they become useless. In 2015, in a last-ditch effort to keep Lake Mead's waters flowing, the city built another cove known as Third Straw. The $800 million-plus structure is essentially a three-mile tunnel that pumps water directly from the bottom of Lake Mead. There's a risk when, water managers, cling to the hope of a big snowpack bailing us out, Fleck said. We need to recognize that there's going to be less water to work with.